Beverly's. It is just Maddie in this video and today I am going to be talking about what it was really like being pregnant at 14. As y'all already know, I got pregnant at 13, turned 14 like literally a few days later. Didn't know I was pregnant at the time, but I did get pregnant at 13, but I'm saying 14 just because I didn't really experience being pregnant at 13 because I didn't know because I experienced being pregnant at 14 because that's when I, I don't think I've really ever talked about this on my channel because obviously being at preg being pregnant at 14 was crazy and I just kind of wanted to talk about some of the different things I experienced so I asked on my story asked me questions about my experience being pregnant at 14 so I am just going to answer a few of those so first question was I made fun of Yes, I was. I think it's inevitable that you're going to be made fun of if you went to school and you leave and got pregnant. I mean, kids are really mean. So yes, I would, was made fun of. When people thought I was pregnant, I would see people posting on their stories, them wearing like a t-shirt and they would like stuff a basketball or a softball in it. Not a softball, like a soccer ball. And say, oh my god, I'm Maddie Lambert, I'm a teen mom. <laughs> and people would just post really mean stuff on like their Snapchat stories. No one, like, no teenager really said anything to me in person that was mean because I feel like people hide behind a screen to say mean things. So, yes, I was made fun of a lot by my peers, especially behind my back. I would just hear about the things they would say. And it was horrible. Okay, next question. What was the hardest part and what was the easiest part? The hardest part was just finding acceptance from others because... When you're a teen mom, not everyone's going to accept you. Like, there's going to be people who say, okay, this is wrong. I'm not going to accept you. But I did find those people who did accept me for who I am and what I've been through. So the hardest part was really just finding acceptance and accepting myself, really. Because it was a thing that was considered abnormal, and I thought it was abnormal, too. So accepting myself and getting acceptance from others was the hardest part. But the easiest part was just knowing, I mean, <laughs> if I'm being like simple, the easiest part was laying in bed all day every day, but I guess I'd have to say the easiest part was looking forward to giving birth. That was really easy and really exciting and it kept my spirits really high. How was my mental health affected? Um, before I told my parents, I was very depressed. I felt like I had no purpose and it was really bad like I had never felt yes I had <laughs> I'm lying to myself it was just a really deep depression and it just like I don't know I had a bit of postpartum depression as well and it just really affects your mental health like especially if you've had mental health issues in the past it can really bring those things out and it also brought out my trichotillomania so I would pull out my eyelashes like I used to when I was younger if you don't know about my trichotillomania I actually have a video over it if you want to go look at it but um it really brought out those things because it was such a stressful time and it definitely upped my anxiety especially going out in public because my anxiety is social so, I don't know, it affected everything in my mental health, it made it worse overall, but then when she was born, it made everything better. Like, my depression was gone, anxiety, more, less about me, more about her, my trichotillomania was better. <laughs> How did I financially support myself? So I didn't support myself financially. My parents supported me financially when I was pregnant. And if there were things like I wanted to buy for Everly, I would like babysit for people or sell stuff online. Because, I mean, for my parents, they already had five kids, including me. So it's really hard to add another one to support. So they supported me, but like there was extra things I wanted that I would have to like sell my stuff for and do work for like I think I dog sat once yeah I dog sat and then I babysat I had so much fun babysitting but I had to do extra things to like help myself support myself because at 14 you can't legally get a job unless you have like a what's it called a work permit and I did not want to go through the pressure of working while being pregnant because I already had a huge chance of futile my chance of fetal demise was already upped from being a teen mom and having hypo 
hyperthyroidism and I just had like a lot of pregnancy issues so I didn't want to like be on my feet all the time so I just worked occasionally and sold stuff online what did I crave okay so my main craving was spicy food I ate all kinds of spicy food when I was pregnant I had a hot Cheetos bag like by my bed at all times and something weird is I never liked chocolate as a kid like it was just too rich for me and when I got pregnant I started craving chocolate so that was really weird I never liked chocolate until I got pregnant and it was actually the same case with my mom she never liked chocolate until she got pregnant with me but I don't know a lot of my I was a really picky eater and a lot of those things kind of drifted away and I ate whatever like I hated mayonnaise and I was like finding myself eating things with mayonnaise in it and I also was vegetarian for like 13 years and then my body needed protein so much that I craved meat so I started eating um, a carnivorous diet <laughs> and um, yeah those were my cravings they were pretty wild I remember I used to go downstairs in the middle of the night I would put two hot dogs in a bun melt cheese on it and put a ton of mustard and jalapenos on it and it was so good like you should try it but um next question this is a really good question what was my first appointment like okay so I went in and okay so I'm gonna explain two the first one was at the hospital so at the hospital we went the day we found out I was pregnant and they they were acting really off and I thought okay like they're just being judgmental I know I'm 14 and pregnant like they're judging me obviously but it turns out they weren't they were just scared out of their mind because they thought I had cancer because a lot of my symptoms were mimicking um, I think it was ovarian cancer I'm not sure I don't remember it was so long ago like literally three years ago that's crazy to think about but they thought I had cancer so they were like really like when they came into the room they were just like kind of quiet and offish and I guess they were just worried because they thought this 14 year old girl thought she was pregnant but she really had cancer so they ran the tests and they came back they're like okay so we thought you had cancer we're gonna be honest here like this looked like cancer to us but it turns out you are pregnant with a healthy baby so that was that was really scary and at my hospital appointment it wasn't really an appointment my hospital visit I also got to see Everly for the first time which was amazing it's like one of my most vivid memories I just remember her little arms moving like this like I saw her little arms and I saw her little feet and it was just so magical they told me don't look at the ultrasound screen we're not allowed to show you so I just did I see that <laughs> So I still saw it and that's like in the moment I knew I needed to keep Everly and it wasn't really a choice for me, abortion, but um, that's the point where I knew I wasn't gonna get a, I wasn't gonna get an abortion or have an adoption, I wanted to raise my baby. And then at my appointment with my obstetrician, it was a really good experience overall. She is so sweet and so understanding she ran a bunch of tests to make sure Everly was healthy and I was on a medicine called carbamazepine and it could be harmful for your baby it could cause heart defects and that's why they thought Everly had like an enlarged lobe in her heart at some point because my doctor she referred me to a specialist because they thought Everly could have heart problems because of the medicine I was taking so I saw a specialist and my doctor was really nice overall. I don't have any negative thoughts from my first appointment. And yeah, I've seen her ever since for, as my gy gynecologist for my endometriosis. So it was a really good experience. How did your family react? Everyone was really supportive. Um, on my dad's side of my family, some people were kind of judgmental. But I mean, I don't, I mean, that's expected there's gonna be at least one person that's judgmental but on my mom's side no one was really negative like my mom my mom's mom my grandma my ma I call her ma <laughs> I am so Texan <laughs> but she told my I think it was Aunt Dorothy or aunt aunt something she told my great aunt 
and my aunt was like, I knew this was gonna happen. <laughs> it wasn't really a negative thing to me. Like, I didn't think of it as negative. I just thought it was kind of funny that they were like, oh my God, I knew it was gonna happen. She like, one of the words she said was, she's too pretty, her mom needs to lock her up. So I thought that was funny. And then some of my relatives up in Washington were judgmental. I don't really know who, but I remember when my mom posted a picture of me on her Facebook from my maternity shoot, that's when she announced my pregnancy to our family and friends. And there was somebody who was like, those pictures are so trashy. She's wearing a half shirt. She shouldn't be flaunting that she's pregnant at 14. And I didn't really even know these relatives. So I was just like, screw it. My, um, my grandma Mary and my grandpa Wayne, they live up in Washington. They were so supportive. They sent me so many things for Everly. Like, they would ask me what I need and just send it to me. And my ma, she was actually pregnant at 14 too. So she was very understanding. She's like, you're taking after me, your old ma. Like, she was really sweet. And my family was all really understanding. My siblings were kind of confused. But I remember my sister River, who was the youngest, but not the youngest. She was the second youngest, but she understood what was going on. Like, Slate, he was only two. He didn't understand what was going on. So me and Robert were talking in the hospital when I went to get my first ultrasound and she was like, can we name your baby hot dog? And it was just, I don't know, it was really sweet to see the way my siblings reacted because they didn't think of it, oh my sister, like I should be ashamed of her. She got pregnant at 14. They were all like, my sister's having a baby. I'm going to be an aunt or an uncle. So everyone was really excited about that. How did it feel not having Everly's dad beside you through my pregnancy? Okay, so no shade to Everly's dad. Like, the past is the past. I'm not trying to be shady whatsoever. Like, me and him get along and good right now. And he's being an amazing dad to Everly. He actually got me a Mother's Day present too, which was very sweet. But, I mean, I would watch, like, YouTube videos of couples and stuff taking care of each other. And it just kind of made me feel like I was missing out. And it made me more so feel like he was missing out because it's his kid too, you know? But I really felt like if I didn't have my parents or my family, that I would not be able to get through my pregnancy. So, I mean, everyone needs support when they're pregnant. And for me, instead of it coming from a baby daddy, it came from my mom. Like, she was my rock during my pregnancy. So, I mean... I feel bad that he wasn't part of the picture at the time and he didn't get to like come to her birth or anything but at the same time it was his choice I didn't really have a say in it and it's the past so all that matters is that he's in her life now and I'm thankful that he is but it was hard to know that he wasn't a part of my life when I was having this baby that was really hard okay next question did any of my public school teachers ever find out okay so if you are mentally ill, you will know what I'm talking about. Okay, there's always that one teacher that we take asylum in. Like we depend on this teacher and we tell them all of our problems. For me, it was my home ec teacher, Miss Bommy. And I don't remember how she found out I was pregnant, but she, no, she found out from my Instagram because she followed me on Instagram. But she DM'd me, she's like, if you need anything, let me know. Like, let me know when you give birth, I wanna come see the baby and it made me so happy because she was always my favorite teacher like throughout middle school I would tell her everything like I would cry to her I would tell her all my problems and then she showed up right after I gave birth brought me flowers and I think she gave me a Walmart gift card it was really sweet and I thought that was amazing it just showed that like I thought if I were ever to go back to school everyone would be so judgmental but it shows that there really are kind-hearted people out there and it made me really happy. So I am going to do one more question and then we are going to wrap this video up. How was the morning sickness? Okay, so morning sickness is a lie. It is not morning sickness. It's all day, all night, all afternoon, all noon. It's all day sickness. You do not just feel sick in the morning. You feel sick all day and all night. It is like a stomach virus that lasts for three months. It is horrible. Um, I suffered very badly from morning sickness up until I think it ended mid second trimester, but it was horrible. I couldn't even get in the car without throwing up and I could barely eat. I lost so much weight during my pregnancy, which is crazy because you'd think you'd gain weight, but 
my pregnancy at first was very unhealthy because my morning sickness was so bad I wasn't on any prenatal vitamins and I was so anemic and I had hyperthyroidism which made me even skinnier so I was a tiny little thing during my pregnancy I wish I could go back to being a tiny little thing but you know we got we've got some healthy weight on us now <laughs> but it was horrible and just the complications of a pregnancy can make it so much harder so if I ever get pregnant again I pray to God that is it is an easy pregnancy because my pregnancy with Everly was hard but that's gonna be it for this video I hope y'all enjoyed and if you are thinking about getting pregnant and you're 14 do not do it no don't if you're like 18 and financially stable go for it but if you are 14 and you live with your parents please 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 don't use protection be a teenager people always say oh my god you're promoting teen pregnancy but literally I will send you condoms if you need them <laughs> like please don't get pregnant as a teenager it is not as glamorous as it seems at all it is life-changing and it can be traumatic for some people like I have PTSD from when I was pregnant and I got nauseous all the time and like when I smell the summer air it makes me nauseous from feeling like from smelling something I felt like when I was pregnant it makes me feel the same way so don't get pregnant don't do it I know babies are cute I'll send you pictures of mine it's okay <laughs> I will see y'all in the next video though and I hope y'all enjoyed this video I will see y'all next time bye guys